Revolution, the investment firm co-founded by former AOL CEO Steve Case, has announced its next Rise of the Rest bus tour. Starting April 29th, the Revolution investment team will head to four Florida cities and Puerto Rico to highlight their emerging startup economies. It's the seventh tour for Rise of the Rest, Revolution's nationwide effort to back startups outside of Silicon Valley and New York. I spoke with Steve Case earlier. Take a listen. We've done seven of these road trips so far. We've had 38 cities all across the, you know, the country, and this time, we're, as you say, we're going to Florida, four cities in Florida, and then uh, Puerto Rico. And the whole effort, when we started almost five years ago, is really shine a spotlight on the, the regions around the country. They're showing momentum around their startup communities, and particularly the entrepreneurs that need more venture capital to drive their companies forward, but also need people to be paying attention to what's happening. As you know, uh, most of the venture capital last year, 75% of the venture capital went to three states, California. California, New York, and Massachusetts. So the other 47 states fought over there. 25 percent were trying to change that and level the playing field. So everybody everywhere who has an idea, a startup idea, really has a shot of moving it forward. Okay, well, let's start with Florida. It's not, I think, known in the popular imagination for technology entrepreneurship, but that's not quite right. Uh, Magic Leap is down in right. Plantation. Uh, you got Chewy, which was acquired by PetSmart two years ago. You know, what, what, tell me about the Florida startup ecosystem and why you find it promising. Well, it is. The, it's the third largest state in the country, and yet it gets less than 2% of venture capital. So it just feels like there's a little bit of an imbalance. And you say the success of Chewy, a $3 billion exit or a magic leap. They've raised $2 billion from Google and Alibaba and others to create a, a very significant you know, company in the AR space. They've hired hundreds of engineers, many of them relocating from Silicon Valley you know, to South Florida. So there's a lot of things happening there. Our tour is going to be in Orlando, which is best known for hospitality and Disney, but it's already becoming a strong uh, uh, a startup uh, city. We're going to the Space Coast, a lot of space tech companies, and we're actually inviting startups from all over the country in, in space tech or, or robots or aviation to, to pitch at the Space Coast pitch competition. We're going to Tampa Bay, a lot of interesting things happening there. Jeff Vinnick and Bill Gates are investing heavily in, in reinventing the downtown area and making it focusing on more on, on startups. And finally, in Miami, which is uh, emerging as one of the global cities and really emerging as a strong startup ecosystem ecosystem as well. And then the last day on Friday, we're going to Puerto Rico, which everybody's focused on some of the problems they've had post-hurricane and the, the rebuilding, sort of the relief efforts, which obviously have been very important. But now I think the focus is on, on really rebuilding the economy and focusing on the industries of the future, the jobs of the future, and therefore you've got to be more supportive of, of startups. So it should be a great week. That was my next question about Puerto Rico. It's now been over a year since the devastation of Hurricane Maria. Uh, you know, they, they're worrying about basic infrastructure. So what are the, what are the opportunities for entrepreneurship and, and tech startups when, you know, the, the basics right now are, are sorely lacking? Well, some of that is the opportunity. I was there a few weeks ago with, uh, with Jose Andres, who will be joining us for our Rise of Rest uh, tour there early in uh, May, obviously, Emmanuel Miranda was there with uh, with uh, Hamilton, uh, and it, it had the rebuilding. We saw a lot. We spent a day traveling around, seeing what was happening. But part of what's happening is entrepreneurs now are recognizing they need to create a more resilient and self-sufficient and sustainable economy. Over 85, 90 percent of the food uh, on the island comes from other places. So how do you create more sustainable agriculture? They do have some, some challenges with the electricity, other kind of things. How do entrepreneurs focus on that? As well as sort of the core startup sector. We've visited an accelerator there. Endeavor is doing some, some, some great work there. So there's a recognition that it's not just the startups that might start there and sell their products or services elsewhere around the country or elsewhere around the, the world, but all also, what are the startups can really, they really create a stronger, more sustainable economy in Puerto Rico? So, Steve, uh, founders in Puerto Rico and in those four cities in Florida that you'll be visiting, I'm sure are, are uh, eager to meet you, to meet your partner, J.D. Vance, uh, also right. the author of Hillbilly Elegy, um, but probably interested in whether they can raise money. Uh, so to what extent on these bus tours do you open up the wallet uh, and make investments from that $150 million rise of the rest fund? 
Well, we do in every city we visited, we do have a pitch competition. And part of the reason we announced the tour today and tell, tell people to go to the rise the rest, you know, com website is so entrepreneurs in those cities can basically apply for the pitch competition. And usually 80 or 100 apply to pitch in each city. We pick the best eight to be on stage. We get a panel of, of uh, judges, some of our team, but also people from the, that, that city. And then we pick a winner and we will invest $100,000 in that company. But part of our goal is to make sure all those companies on the stage get more attention. Hopefully all of them get other investors. And also through our Rise the Rest Seed Fund, which as you mentioned, we launched uh, just over a year ago and have 40 of the most iconic investors and entrepreneurs in the country as part of that. We also find other companies outside the pitch competition that we've invested in. So far, that Rise the Rest Fund, we've invested in more than 100 companies in over 50 cities. Uh, and so there's a, there's a lot of great entrepreneurs everywhere. Uh, it's just most of the venture capital in places like Silicon Valley is focused in their backyard in New York City or Boston similarly focused in their area. There's not enough focus on what's happening in the rest of the country, and that's what we're trying to change with with Rise of the Rest. Okay, Steve, let's bring it closer to home. We're potentially two weeks away from another uh, impasse over the border wall and maybe another government shutdown. Are you, are you worried about the business implications of that? Yeah, I think hopefully everybody's learned the lesson of the last shutdown, which was sort of a standoff and and hopefully, the, 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 I know there are a number of people who are working uh, as part of the 17-member uh, group uh, that's trying to figure out what is the compromise, how do we move forward in a way that can avoid this shutdown and maybe even put legislation in place, such as what Senator Warner has proposed, so that this kind of shutdown doesn't happen on a, on a regular basis. It's clearly not helpful to the economy, clearly not helpful uh, in terms of people's everyday lives. I just came an hour ago from the World Central Kitchen here in Washington, D.C. that Jose Andres put together, and there's still a line outside the door, even though it's quite cold and, and snowy here, because a lot of you know, families really are having a tough time. Even though the government's reopened, there are contractors that, that weren't, weren't getting paid and aren't going to get paid. Uh, so this kind of thing is not good for the country. It's not good for the community. It's not good for the people working for either directly or direct, indirectly for the government. So we have to figure out a, a path forward that doesn't turn this into a you know, every few weeks uh, kind of a political standoff. Uh, well, in the search for longer-term solutions, prospective presidential candidates, including Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders, have been proposing all manners of new taxes, uh, particularly on, on the wealthiest Americans, including a 77 percent estate tax. And I'm curious how you feel about that. Well, I'm open to looking at new kind of taxes, and certainly I've, I've done well, and you know, I'd be happy to pay more taxes as long as it goes into programs that can be helpful, including things like education and, and efforts around entrepreneurship and, and uh, job training and, and, uh, and so forth. But more broadly, I'd say I, a part of my focus really the last 10 years has been to stay out of politics. I do focus on policy, worked on things like the, the Jobs Act well, five, six years ago, more recently worked on the Investing in Opportunity Act that created Opportunity Zones as part of the tax reform a year ago. I'm happy to engage on anything that could be supportive of innovation and entrepreneurship, but I only do it in a bipartisan way. So I'll, I'll stay out of the, you know, the, you know, the game of predicting what might happen in the presidential election. Okay. Well, let me just ask you for one detail. Are there tax approaches that you favor, like an estate tax versus Elizabeth Warren's proposed tax? I think it's 3% over uh, assets over a billion dollars. My, my, my focus, really, my expertise has been around what are the incentives that could drive more investment in the companies in these rise the rest cities, help rebuilding the communities, help creating jobs. So things like, as part of tax reform, as I mentioned, the, the Opportunity Zones were just created a little over a year ago. Getting those right, and there's still some rules that the Treasury is, is looking at are, that are necessary to get that right. It, it can will fuel investment in neighborhoods in terms of real estate opportunities, but it's also very important that the rules be designed in a way that fuels investment in companies that can create jobs. That's really been the area of focus. The other aspects of, of uh, taxing is just not really my area of expertise.